Welcome back to another video. This should be part two of the lathe turning project series of videos um, that I've started to do. Um, and in the previous one, um, you saw me um, turning some threads, um, setting up, uh, ready to um, machine the um, M42.5 by two millimeter pitch thread um, for the uh, big bore uh, MIFID spindle nose. Uh, I'm machining a back plate um, to mount um, a new Pratt Bernard four jaw chuck onto the lathe. Um, it's quite a big chuck, it's 160mm uh, diameter so it's about as big as I can go. Um, so, um, so it's quite a big back plate, it's bigger than anything um, available to buy so that's why I'm making one. Um, and um, so where are we up to? Well, I've machined um, the back plate to this stage. So let me see if I can get you in there to see. So we're holding on to um, the boss. Um, so um, I've, I've machined this to its current dimensions uh, from a, a rough machined or a rough milled um, stage. Um, I, I took it to the bridge port and, and let the bridge port do some heavy heavy work um, and um, this this piece of cast iron was quite hard in places so it was um, it was going to take ages to turn it so um, so anyway I haven't got any footage of that but um, there should be some pictures that I can uh, include here um, that shows me uh, milling um, the uh, just hogging the material out Okay, so <clears throat> um, we've got the counterbore uh, machined uh, to size, uh, and I've modelled that based on um, this ER40 collet chuck, uh, which I've shown on previous video. Um, so I've uh, it, it will match dimensionally um, the interface on the inside of this chuck, and um, so I haven't been able to trial fit it onto the machine yet because the threads aren't formed um, so I don't know if that counter ball will fit just yet. So uh, the next stage, um, so if I bring you around this side a little bit, okay there we go, um, so I've blacked up that ball now um, ready to machine the threads into it. Um, so, <coughs> uh, so I've got a new boring bar with a uh, 60 degree uh, threading insert in. Um, so, um, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to set that up for centre height now. The machine's already set up um, for the right thread pitch, uh, which is two millimetres. Um, the ball's the right diameter. So we're ready to go. Um, so I'll just take you over um, because I'll, I'll just take this opportunity now just to show you a quick review of some new tool holders. Okay, so um, what we have here is uh, two different types of um, multi-fix tool holders. They're both size A, uh, obviously, um, because that's the size of tool holder that I have. Um, so these blue ones were some uh, generic um, tool holders that I bought uh, online. Um, it came to about um, 300 and something quid for four of these tool holders and the tool post um, which was a little bit expensive compared to the prices offered by Peewee Tools uh, who manufacture these ones so, so they have the, the gold uh, setting piece at the top and the other ones are the blue ones um, so, um, so I bought three of these um, there was a, a little bit of a delay in getting them into the UK because of uh, border issues with Brexit and Covid and all of that crap um, so they took a little while to get but before I bought them um, I was in touch with the owner of the company um, and he's a really helpful guy actually um, he gave me a lot of useful information and um, and he's he's very um, uh, easy going and, and gave some really good feedback um, so initially um, uh, he was a little concerned about fitting a, a size A 
it's all post onto a MIFID 7 Super 7 um, but as I've mentioned on a previous video um, I've lowered the height of my uh, tool post um, because I've removed the compound slide. Anyway, it did fit with the um, uh, with, with the compound slide, um, but uh, but it's a little bit restrictive when you go to use bigger tooling. So here's one where I um, here's an example where I machined the thickness of the of the tool down uh, in order to reach centre height. Um, but if I'd have held off and waited until I'd reduced my height on the tool post, then that would have fit fine as standard. Um, but anyway, I can still use this with my compound slide and that's all fine. Um, so as a comparison between the two, um, these, are, these are good, these fit okay. Um, the splines, the interface to the tool post, um, their ground, the surface ground, and um, and they're okay. They're okay. But I noticed that they're, from out of the box they're a little bit sticky going on and off the tool post, um, but that'll improve in time, I suppose. Um, these ones, in comparison, um, I'd say overall they're better. Um, these these are wire eroded from hardened steel block, um, so there's no grinding as such on these, um, and the finish is as good underneath as it is on the top. Um, it's got like um, a, a bead blasted type of surface finish. Um, these these ones, um, if you can see that, the deburring around these holes is rough as hell. Um, so, I mean, does it really matter? No, but, you know, I mean, I've paid a lot of money for these and um, when they've just been pretty ropey with the deburring, it's a bit disappointing. Uh, in comparison, um, these ones have better regularity in terms of the chamfers around the holes, um, but and the thickness is is reduced on this one as well um, compared to to this PV Tools one at the bottom. So um, so this should be more rigid um, and uh, than this one. But we're talking, you know, will I see the difference on a small machine? Probably not. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so in this particular one, um, I've got an RDG Tools uh, boring bar. Um, this is a 20mm tool um, and it's got a threading insert in. So I'm going to set this for height in a minute and then that's what I'm going to use to uh, turn the, th the two mil pitch thread in the back plates. Right, so I'm just about to machine um, this bore ready to, to turn the thread. Um, I've already machined this counter bore on the other side. Um, I'm holding the work in the chuck from this side. Um, so I'll be coming in from this direction with the boring bar and with the uh, threading tool. Uh, it's a female thread, so I need to machine it undersized compared to the uh, the male thread diameter. Uh, if I was turning a male thread, it'd be a very straightforward case of turning it to the, if it say it was an M42.5 male thread, then that's the diameter that I would turn it to, 42.5. Um, and I'd turn the thread over the top of it. Um, but I need to turn the female bore undersized. And... Uh, so I need to calculate what diameter that should be. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, it's a very simple calculation. Uh, in the Zeus book here, uh, this is the metric course threads page. Um, it's a two mil, um, yeah, it's a two mil pitch thread. So if you look down the table to two millimeter pitch, um, the depth is 1.227 rounded. So I need to double that. So 1.227, which is 2.45. So uh, 42.5. Let's see, so um, I just subtract that from the thread diameter now. So 42. 0.5 minus 
0.45 is 40.05. I probably could have done that in my head, but better to be safe than sorry. So that's the diameter um, that I'll turn this bore to uh, before uh, turning thread. Also um, worth noting is that this counter bore obviously is bigger in diameter, so I don't need a relief undercut here. So I can just come across and straight into that bore with my turning with my uh, thread turning tool. Uh, so that's what I'll do next. Well, we've made a few passes now, um, so um, I'm going to see if I can get in there uh, and try this radius gauge on the film. I was probably blocking it then, apologies if I was. Yeah, so that fits okay. Um, so I'm just going steady, I'm taking 0.1 per cut, which is probably quite light, um, but um, I'm just going steady at the moment. So um, I'm going to put this on time lapse now and see if I can. Uh, show you a few cycles of uh, how I'm doing this um, but just a, perhaps just a, a quick explanation so what I'm doing is I'm not disengaging the half nut I leave the half nut engaged all the time um, so I put a cut on feed through stop the spindle wind the, the tool back in away from the work and then I'll rapid traverse back uh, by putting the machine into reverse and then I'll stop it just short of um, approaching the work and I'll come back in put a cut on feed in at slower speed and then repeat the cycle so um, so that's what I'll do now just taken what I think is the, my last pass on the uh, cutting the threads I've just given it a couple of spring passes I just had a, a little bit of extra meat to take out uh, just so that it, it fitted nicely onto the nose of the spindle so um, I'm going to show you how I've been taking the work out of well the work in the chuck off the spindle and flipping it round and just trying the thread on the spindle so um, We'll uh, we'll try that now. And hopefully, I can do this without bashing my fingers because that's not going to be any fun. take the weight with my left hand and turn the work with my right and there we go I can just feel it's about to come off the thread there we go so just give that a little clean with a brush so both parts are nice and clean now so I'm gonna hold that nice and square See if I can find oops, the start of the thread. There it is. So I'm just taking, I'm not leaving it dangle on its own like that when I'm winding onto the thread. I'm trying to take some of the weights because otherwise the weight of this chuck will cause the thread to bind make you think that it's a tight thread when it isn't. So I'm kind of lifting it up while I'm turning it. And that's just bottomed out now against the shoulder on the spindle. So that's fine. That's the right kind of fit. I've just got a little bit of clearance on there. It's hardly anything. Maybe, maybe I don't know, 30 to 50 microns clearance on the thread, which is fine. So, slowly, oh. Okay, so, let me just put that back on for a minute. Oops. There we go. Okay, so, 
Um, I'm going to take the work out of the chuck, take the chuck off the machine, and then I'll try this on for size now. So we'll see how that goes. So this thread wants a nice little chamfer, but we'll do that later. So we'll just pop that on there for a minute. Right, let's clean this chuck off. Okay, it's nice and clean. Um, Give that a spray of WD-40. The weight isn't the problem with this chuck, because it's not a big chuck. It's the proximity. There's not a lot of space here, and I really don't enjoy bashing my hands on the bed of the machine. Not my idea of fun. Okay. Right, that's the chuck oiled. Put in the weight. Down there for now. Give the hands a wipe. Right. Place your bets now. Is this going to fit? I know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a bit snug on that spigot. Which is a bit of a bugger because I've lost my registration now. If I'd have held the work in the chuck that way round, I could have turned this counter bore and the threads in the same setup, which would have been ideal. Um, but I couldn't do it that way because uh, my chuck's not big enough to hold it like that. I probably could have held it in my face plate. And turn the threads and the counter ball. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to find a way of holding this now nice and central so that I can just tickle this bore out. So I'll set that up and then um, I'll bring you back. Right, so um, I put the part back up on the faceplate, uh, clocked in the bore, um, picked it up, and just took maybe 20 30 mics off it. Um, so that should have done it because it was only just not going on so I'll take this off here now um, flip it around keeping it on the face plate in case I need to put it back up and I'll give it a little trial fit on there what else with a spindle so that feels good. It's not fully home yet, but I just want to give it a wiggle. And there's no play in that really. Nothing I can feel. So it screws all the way home. And that's on. Lovely, lovely job. So um, so that's how I want it because um, I'm going to face this off now. Um, turn the diameter so it's nice and true. Uh, turn this bigger on and then um, that'll fit the four jaw chuck. So that's the next bit. Here come the dancers, one by one. Your mama's calling, but you're heaven first. You'll find your dancing on in number nine cloud. Put your head together now and sing it out loud. It's all part of my rock and roll fantasy.
so I've mounted the chuck up now it fits um, really nice on that spigot um, there's just a tiny bit of play in there maybe oh, 20 microns something like that but that's what I, that's what I wanted um, so um, I didn't want it to be a really tight fit onto that back plate um, so the spigot it's about three well it is three millimeters long um, it's 125 mil diameter that fits into the rebate in the back of the chuck um, so that's on there now I think I've lost a bit of footage where I thought uh, the camera was rolling but it wasn't um, anyway so the chucks on uh, I've just clocked it now to see where it is and it's within 30 microns there now so I could I can bump it so it's a little bit better than that um, uh, but it's good enough as it is uh, for an independent four jaw um, on the back here um, let's see where uh, my screws come straight through I've got about 10 millimeters sticking through on the back side here and that's ideal because what I want to do now is um, even though these are tapped holes in here and it's going nowhere um, I'll lock the threads but also I'll put some lock nuts on the back of here so it's belt and braces and it's definitely not going to go anywhere um, but um, Anyway, just give you a final look. So there it is. That's um, my new Pratt & Bernard, or Pratt & Bernard four jaw, independent four jaw on the Myford. Uh, back plate machine is finished. Um, and uh, job's are good, so I need to clean the machine down now. Um, and then it'll be on to the next project, and which should be, um, I need to get back onto the drawers for the lathe stand. Um, because I've not done anything with those I was waiting for material for a while the material came in um, but anyway I've, I've made a few changes I've, 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 um, I'm setting up my little workshop at home so that's where I am now I'm not in my little unit anymore uh, with my lathe so uh, just trying to get the place a bit straighter than it is now um, I've got a garage extension coming up um, so once that's done, um, I'll get my bridge port in here and then um, I'll give you a proper little tour of my workshop then. Um, but as it is, it's not really worth showing you um, too much at the moment. So there we are, that's it, job done. Um, so some internal screw threading done, um, sheening of a back plate for a four jaw independent chuck. Um, and that's it, job's a good one. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one. Oh, 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 oh,